Guy, I was so delighted to see someone with your exceptional talents step into the role as CEO for Scandium Canada. But I think in general, many members of our audience do not fully appreciate the criticality of Scandium. Can you tell us a little bit more about the real Scandium market as it is today? Well, oh, thank you for having me, uh, Tracy. Of course, I'm delighted to try to educate a little bit more the public investors. Scandium is not known, honestly, but Scandium is a game changer for the aluminum industry. And I explain why. Because you just put a little bit of Scandium, very little quantities of Scandium, you mix it with aluminum and other minerals, and you obtain super strength alloys, lightweight, as strong as titanium, strength of, uh, of uh, iron ore, and uh, you reduce the weight of your components. So for a society that wants to go global net zero and reduce the GHG, the metal of the future is scandium. I agree with you completely. And I don't think many people understand that, you know, scandium is used in fighter jets, for instance. And I, it's my understanding it even helps with radar detection. Is that correct? I, I would not go that far as the, the uh, radar detection, and I will correct you. The only fighter jet that has scandium parts is the MiG-29, a Russian fighter jet. Why? Because most, if not all, of the scandium available in the world come either from China or Russia. So there's no other source of scandium readily available outside these two countries. So that's why you don't find that in the uh, USA or European fighter jets in a large quantities, if, if any. But you're going to change that, correct? Oh, absolutely. Because there are, if you only Google uh, patents, aluminum scandium patents for Airbus, you're going to find 10, 12, maybe 15 patents to their name, developing parts and use of aluminum scandium alloys for their, uh, their needs but they don't produce it commercially because there's not enough. So there's a big, huge potential latent demand for aluminum with scandium. The only thing that restricts the adoption is the fact that there's no long-term safe supply. So the minute you're gonna have a long-term safe supply on a Western regional, you're gonna see exponential booming of demand for aluminum scandium alloys. Well, for all of you out there that are following Scandium as I am, you have been doing an amazing job with probably one of the most ferocious timelines I've ever seen for a CEO since you stepped in in early January. Um, I was just going through your news releases here this morning. What would you consider to be the most substantial uh, milestone you've achieved since you've become CEO? Well, there are numbers of milestones, but I would say... The signature of the pre-development agreement with the Nascapi First Nation of uh, Kawawachikamak uh, that we recently announced about two, three days ago. That's a huge uh, achievement because obviously social acceptability of any project and specifically with First Nations is very, very paramount to the success of a project of that size or any project as a matter of fact. So that's in a very short period of time, being able to sit down and come to a, a large pre-development agreement that allows us to do all of the pre-development work in conjunction and in agreement with the NASCAPs up to the construction decision. So until the feasibility study is completed, we, have, we are in agreement on how to work on the land and how to approach it uh, with the NASCAPs. That's very, very important. That's a good starting point. Obviously, we also... I've been obtaining uh, very interesting results on the improving the metallurgy of the um, of the conversion of into scandium oxide, reducing the cost, increasing the, and honestly uh, signing uh, prototyping uh, agreements for parts using aluminum scandium to be able to demonstrate to potential clients all of the value added of a scandium aluminum or aluminum scandium alloy. So we, we are rapidly moving in numerous directions as far as market is concerned, as far as the development of the project is concerned. So 
in two months and a half, three months, it's a good achievement. This probably shines some light on the geek side of me, but I thought the update of your mineral processing flow sheet was a sizable accomplishment. Would you like to talk about that, please? Yes, it is a sizable, but it's still a small portion of the flow sheet that we've released, updates and optimization. We've been able to increase uh, in the initial processing uh, aspect of the flow sheet by 26%, the recovery rate of the scandium into the flotation process. That 500 kilo metallurgical test that is currently being done at SGS in Lakefield is supposed to be completed by the end of August. At that point, we'll be able to make it shine because yes, you're right, it's a good achievement. But as long as we don't have the full picture, we don't want to brag too much about it, but we were very satisfied with the first results. And of course, I would assume both the Canadian and the U.S. government would be lined up at your front door to find out how you're progressing. How is it going with all of these astounding grants that we're hearing announced for critical mineral investments by both the U.S. and Canadian government? It's a little bit more complex with the U.S., I would say, uh, even if the, the numbers are much, much larger than in Canada. But for Canadian government and provincial governments, be it uh, Labrador and Newfoundland, Quebec, uh, there is money available. There are, as a matter of fact, the SGS piloting that we're doing is 69% uh, funded by a, a subsidy from the Quebec government. So there is a very large $1.5 million critical mineral infrastructure fund uh, that we're trying to tap on. We filed at the end of February a large uh, subsidy demand request uh, that we should hear in the fall, it takes five, six months to be approved, uh, to cover 75% of all of the expenses related to acceleration of a project to be shovel ready sooner. That's the purpose of that critical mineral infrastructure fund. There's another fund that's called Critical Mineral R&D Development uh, that we applied for in uh, hoping to be able to, if you recall on the preliminary economic assessment, we are going to be making scandium oxide and converting it with aluminum to master alloy 2% scandium. We have, and a little portion of the revenues come from a total rare earth oxide without further refining. We decided, then uh, we looked at it and said, oh, gee, there's a value added in some of these rare earths that we were just bundling up and selling to uh, somebody else. So uh, we applied for a grant to be able to have a large piloting of metallurgy on how to refine recovering some high value uh, rare earth in our, in our process. So that definitively is of help will be of help in the, uh, the present value of the project once we go through with the, the pre-feasibility. So there's a lot of activities that people do not properly assess or we don't market that enough, but uh, we're certainly, we have our eyes on the ball, that's for sure. Something that we don't talk often, but we mention, but maybe people don't grasp the value of it, we have been involved with uh, McMaster University for two years now, over two years, on a PhD program, strictly on the 3D printing possibility, using scandium into a mix of, of powders to make specific parts. We have successfully, well, they have, or that student specifically, has been able to achieve great, great advancement on that part, and that alone and we should be able to talk about it in a couple of months. Uh, that's a game changer. Nobody, nobody has done 3D printing commercially using scandium into a mix. We've been able to achieve it, or the PhD student has been able to achieve it. All of the IP uh, uh, is with uh, Scandium Canada. Some things are going to be patentable, that's for sure. And that could be a game changer. So. There are so many opportunities with Scandium, so many, that you never know which one is going to be trigger, triggering the value of this company in a foreseeable future, but definitely one of them is going to strike. Well, of course, this doesn't surprise me at all. 
And with everything you've achieved in the last three months, what should we as shareholders be anticipating or looking forward to in your upcoming quarter? Oh, upcoming quarter, I would say uh, groundwork at Crater Lake, increasing the quality of the resource, uh, advancing significantly the environmental data uh, collection, uh, other uh, pre-development agreements with other First Nations involved uh, around the pro the project. But uh, maybe more significantly for the people in general is the potential signature of uh, partnerships and or MOUs with end users, trying to develop the um, vision on how they can gain access to a large long-term supply, reliable supply of Scandium for the future. Well, we're certainly cheering for both you and, of course, Scandium Canada. Thank you so much, Guy, for joining us today. My pleasure.